Future CPAs. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Accounting Lessons with BCV. Sir Brian here again. We will now be continuing the discussion on Defined Benefit Plan. Now, before, we, uh, before you watch this video, I advise you to watch first the first part of our discussion of Defined Benefit Plan before proceeding with this video. Okay, the link is provided in the description. Okay, let's start. So, in the first part of our discussion, we have discussed the first component of defined benefit plan, namely defined benefit obligation. So, in this video, we will now be discussing the second component, which is the plan assets. We'll start our discussion by defining what is a plan asset. Okay, so plan assets are assets that are held by an entity that is legally separate from the reporting entity. So dito pa lang, alam natin, may iba pang entity na kasali dito. Hindi lang si reporting entity. So let's say ABC Company sets up, sets up a retirement benefit fund. That is another entity na. And that entity exists only to fund your employee benefits. No? Particularly the retirement benefits. Hindi siya pwedeng gamitin sa ibang ibang uh, tawag dito? Sa mga ibang bagay. No? Para lang yan talaga sa mga retirement benefits. Okay? Then, these assets are available only to pay or fund employee benefits Hindi pwedeng gamitin to pambayad ng utang ng company sa mga uh, creditors niya. And also, this fund will not be returned to the company unless either, number one, the remaining assets of the fund are sufficient to meet all the retirement benefit obligations. And number two, the assets are to be returned only for reimbursement. No? Reimbursement for retirement benefits already paid. So may mga case kasi na inaabanohan mo na ni employer yung retirement benefits ng kanyang employees. So as a form of reimbursement, ire-request niya yan doon sa fund. Okay? So that's the nature of plan assets. Next, how do we measure plan assets? According to IS-19, we measure plan assets at fair value. Next, factors affecting plan assets. There are three factors. Number one, contributions. So ito yung mga hinuhulog ng company every period. Dito na pupunta lahat ng mga hinuhulog ng company for the retirement benefits of its employees. Number two, payment of benefits. So kapag may nag-retire na, dyan lang kukunin yung mga ipambabayad sa employees na magre-retire. And the third factor, actual returns on plan assets. Since I have mentioned that the retirement benefit fund is being is being uh, deposited in income generating funds, it will earn returns, of course. Okay, it may be in the form of dividends, interest, gains, or losses. Okay, now. Ang mas i-discuss natin ay yung actual return on plan assets. Yung numbers 1 and 2 natin, hindi na natin yan masyadong i-discuss because that is on the part of the employer na. No? Yung contributions niya, yung pagbayad, etc. Dito lang tayo kay actual return on plan assets. Okay? Ayan. Sige. So, actual return on plan assets actually... It consists of two types, no? It consists of two components rather, not types but components, no? Number one, interest income and remeasurement gains and losses. Interest income, saglit lang to. Kasi similar ito sa pag-compute ng interest expense mo on defined benefit plan. Okay? So that is simply by multiplying the beginning balance of the plan assets by the discount rate as discussed in the first part of our lecture video. Then, 
For the second component, remeasurement gains and losses. Actually, this is just another name for actuarial gains and losses. Okay? Ibang pangalan lang yan ng actuarial gains and losses, but they pertain to one and the same concept. No? So, how do we know if there will be actuarial gain or actuarial loss? No? There will be an actuarial gain if the actual return is higher than interest income. Then there will be actuarial loss if the interest income is higher than actual return. So ito naman yung indicators ng mga actuarial gains and losses on plan assets. Okay? Si defined benefit obligation, may sarili siyang actuarial gains and losses. Si plan assets, may sarili din actuarial gains and losses. Okay? So kay plan assets, ito naman yung kanyang indicators. No? So pag mas malaki yung actual return kaysa sa interest income mo, meron ka actuarial gain. Pag mas mataas naman ang interest income mo kaysa sa actual return mo, meron kang actuarial loss. Right? Okay. Now, how do we compute the ending balance of the plan asset account? Okay? So kung si DBO may, may T-account din, hindi magpapa iwan si plan assets. May T-account din siya. Okay? So what are the components of the plan assets? Let's start. Of course, beginning balance. Next. Second component niya is the interest income. Diba? So tandaan nyo, interest income is uh, beginning balance times discount rate. Okay? The third component is contributions. Ano ang magpapabawas kay plan assets? Answer? Of course, yung benefits paid. Benefits paid to retirees, to retirees, retired as expected, at yung benefits paid to, to the employees retired in advance. Okay? So, kasali yan dito sa benefits paid natin. Kasi di ba, dito kinukuha yung ipambabayad natin sa mga magre-retire na employees. So, lahat ng mga lalabas na pera, ibabawas natin sa plan assets. Okay? Tandaan niyo yan. Okay? Sige. So, from here, you can now compute the unadjusted unadjusted balance of the plan assets. No? So, papasok ulit sila actuarial gains and losses dito. So, meron tayong nasa debit, meron tayong nasa credit. Okay? Now, kapag actuarial gain, ano kaya sa tingin nyo ang nangyayari sa balance ng plan assets? Paano kung nag Kapano kung mas mataas yung actual return kesa sa interest income? What will happen to the amount of plan assets? Will it increase or decrease? Answer, mag-i-increase yan. No? Kasi yung actual return mo, mas mataas sa na-compute mong interest income. So that's why you need to increase the balance of your plan assets. Therefore, pag, pag actuarial gain, tataas ang balance ng plan assets mo. Okay? Tataas ang balance ng plan assets mo. Pag actuarial loss, of course, mababawasan yan. Okay? Magkaba magkabaliktad ang rule ng plan assets at ng defined benefit obligation. Okay? Yan. So, tandaan, pag actuarial gain, tataas plan assets mo. Pag actuarial loss, bababa naman siya. Okay? Then, you can now determine your ending balance. So, ito naman ang components ng plan assets natin. Okay? So, yan. Nakukompleta na natin unti-unti si defined benefit plan kasi na-discuss na si DBO, na-discuss na rin si plan assets. Okay? Now, 
let's reinforce the concepts on plan assets. <clears throat> An entity provided the following information on December 31, 2023. We are asked to compute for number one, interest income, number two, remeasurement gain or loss, number three, plan assets. Okay, ready na? Number one tayo. Interest income, papano kino compute yan? That is, plan assets beginning multiplied by discount rate. Magkano ang beginning balance ng plan assets? 4 million. The discount rate, 9%. So magkano ang interest income natin? 4 million times 9%? Answer, 360,000. So answer for number 1, 360,000. Number two, remeasurement gain or loss. Paano natin kinocompute ang remeasurement gain or loss ng plan assets? That is by comparing actual returns and interest income. Okay? Magkano actual return? That is 300,000. Magkano yung interest income natin kanina? Di ba 360,000 yon? Okay. Sino mas mataas? Actual return or interest income? Uy, si interest income ang mas mataas pala. No? So the resulting difference is 60,000 negative. No? Di ba nag-compute nag tayo ng interest income 360k pero actual return niya ay mas mababa. So what's the result. Is it a gain or a loss? Answer, loss. So, our answer for number two is remeasurement loss. Also known as actuarial loss. Okay? So, that's for number two. And lastly, number three, let's now compute for the balance of the plan assets. Okay. January 1, 2023, magkano beginning balance? 4 million. Tama? Interest income, pasok agad natin, magkano yung sagot sa number 1? 360,000. Third component, Contributions to the fund, 1.1 million. Okay. <clears throat> Fourth component, benefits paid. Okay. So, di ba sabi natin kanina, pag benefits paid, whether the, the employees retired as expected and those employees retired in advance, yung amount na lumabas sa plan assets ang ilal ang ibabawas natin. Okay? So, magkano yun? Re benefits paid to employees retired on normal retirement date? Of course, walang problema yan. Kasi pareho lang naman yan sa present value of benefits settled. No? There will be no gain or loss on settlement on that. Alright? Then, benefits paid to employees retired in advance at given din yung present value of benefits settled in advance. So alin dito sa dalawang accounts na to ang ipapasok natin sa plan assets? Is it the 100,000 or 85,000? Correct answer is of course 100,000. That's the amount paid. So yan yung amount na lalabas talaga sa plan assets mo. Gets nyo? Okay? Compute for the unadjusted balance. How much? 4,760,000. Tama? Then, since the actual return on plan assets is less than interest income, meron tayong actuarial loss. Magkano yung kanina? Di ba sagot natin 60K? Yan. Bawas natin si 60,000. 
So magkano ang December 31, 2023 plan assets? 4,700,000. So the answer for number three is 4.7 million. Okay? Yan. So at this moment, okay na tayo kay DBO at kay plan assets. Si DBO, tatandaan nyo, ang kanyang balance ay nasa credit kasi liability siya. Ang plan assets naman ay nasa debit kasi asset siya. Okay? Yan. So we are already done with the second part of our discussion on defined benefit plan. In our next lecture video, we will now be combining all the concepts of defined benefit obligation and plan assets. So kumbaga, pagdating sa part 3 natin, comprehensive na sila. No? They exist in one problem na. Alright? Okay. So, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free accounting lecture videos. Thank you for watching, guys.